Hello friends, welcome to Current Science Daily Current Affairs class. In this video, we are going to discuss about Karnataka current affairs which have happened in the first week of February. Before moving into the discussion of the current affairs, I have some information to share with you. The Current Science is starting mains core, mains batch, case mains batch from March 7th. So the classes will be conducted according to the syllabus of the K uh, according to the syllabus of the KS and it will be comprehensive coverage of the main syllabus and it will the classes will be conducted according to the changing demands or changing structure of the KS examination pattern. It will be having a comprehensive coverage of the syllabus. It includes various test series, one to one feedback and all round improvement of a candidate. Apart from this, the can credence IS is also going to start the IAS foundation course starting from March 14th, which will also covers the comprehensive coverage of the UPSC syllabus, which will be, which will, uh, which will help the candidates to understand the concepts in a better manner. So it will be starting from March 14th. Apart from this, for the case, for the case examination, there will be a core batch and also mentorship program. So core batch is a unique program designed majorly for the students who have already written mains or went for the interview. It will be very useful for them so that the program has uniquely designed to meet the needs of those candidates who have already written the mains or went to the interview. Then there is also a mentorship program where there will be a one to one feedback and daily analysis and weekly improvement tests for the individual basis and it will help you in improving your answer writing skills and also to address the changing demand of the examination. The same course, the mentorship is also provided for the UPSC candidates where there will be a one to one feedback and analysis with regard to the prelims and mains point of view. Apart from this, there is also a PSI test series available which, which will be consists of various format of test series. If one includes 12 test series, 15 test series and 22 test series and those questions will be set or arranged, uh, will be asked based on the demand or how the examination trend is changing on and based on the those trend we have set the various question paper. All the interested candidates can come and get the use of these benefits. So moving on to the current affairs discussion. So we will start from the we will start from this Beluru Halabidu. The, it is an issue because the government of India recently gave out the list. The government of India gave out the list to the World Heritage Site Center to include the sacred ensembles, the sacred ensembles of Beluru, Halabidu, and Somanathapura. And Somanathapura to be included in the UNESCO World Heritage Site. So this is the list, the list which is sent by the India included this sacred ensembles for the year 2022 and 23. The Hoysala Kingdom which ruled the Karnataka and its surroundings has a unique features when it comes to the art and architecture. The Hoysala architecture has a unique features and this architecture is also called as Vesara style of arch architecture or Hoysala style of architecture. Hence, it is not, it is, does not resemble the Nadran style, it is called as Nagara style of architecture or the Southern style, that is a Dravidian style of architecture. It has a unique features. So what are the unique features of the Hoysala architecture? You can see from this diagram, you can see this from this diagram that temples are located on an elevated platform. This is called as Jagati. This Jagat is used as a Pradakshinapata or ambulatory passage for the devotees to circumvent the temple. And one more important other aspect is the stellate plan of architecture. So all the temples are designed in a star shaped structure. This is what we call it as stellate plan. And these temples have a unique shrine principles which means each temple may have a single shrine. We call it as Ekakuta. If it has two shrines, it is called Dvikuta. If it is a three shrines, it is called Trikuta and so on. 
So, this is the unique features of the Hoysala architecture and the stone used in the construction of these temples is the soap stone. Soap stone. And the, uh, one more unique feature is the, uh, <coughs> the architecture of the temples and other monuments are intricately designed where we can see the various minute details are finely designed or intricately designed. These are the unique features of the Hoysala architecture. Now, now let us understand about the UNESCO World Heritage Site. So, UNESCO means United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization which identifies various world heritage sites which are of physical or natural importance and they will be kept or put under the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So, these event started from 1972 and across the globe they will identify the which are unique in their physical or natural appearance and they will be placed under the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. From the Indian po point of view, there are there are 38 sites, there are 38 sites which have been included in the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Of them, 30 are, 30 are cultural heritage sites, the 7 are natural heritage sites and the one is the mixed site, one is the mixed site. From the Karnataka point of view, Hampi and Pattadakallu has been included in the UNESCO World Heritage Site. So, if the, the sacred ensembles of the Soisalas, if it gets included, then it becomes the third shrine or third architectural marvel to be included in the UNESCO World Heritage Site from the Karnataka state. Moving on to the next important aspect that is the suburban railway project. Suburban railway project, this project is in news because the recently the central government in its budget allocated 450 crores for the execution of the suburban railway project. So, <coughs> this suburban railway project is a ambitious program of uh, uh, ambitious program designed to connect Bangalore with the suburban areas to come connect the Bangalore with the suburban areas such as satellite towns and semi rural or rural areas such as Kangari and the periphery roads, Devanali. So, like this Chikbanavar. So, they wanted to connect the periphery areas of the Bangalore city to the center of the Bangalore. So, this is the issue. Then, the this project, this suburban railway project, is in, in implemented by K Ride. KRAID means Railway Infrastructure Development Enterprise of Karnataka, which is executing this the suburban railway project. The suburban railway project is implemented under four corridors. So, corridor 1, corridor 2, and corridor 3. The corridor 1 is called as Sampige, Sampige, and it is connecting Majestic to Devanahalli. It will connect Majestic to Devanahalli, whereas the corridor 2 it is called as Mallige. It is called as Mallige. It connects Bayapnali to Chikbanavar. Bayapnali to Chikbanavar. Then the corridor 3, it is called as Parijata. It will con connect Kengeri to Whitefield. To Whitefield. Then the last corridor is called as Kanaka. It connects Rajanagutte to Hilalegi. So, these are the major four corridors. It in, in these corridors, there comes various stations, various connectivity points, which once implemented will become a, will, will enhance the transportation and also make that mode of transport very easier, efficient and also it leads to de decongestion of urban areas, that is the Bangalore to the periphery areas. So, now le <coughs> let us move to the next important topic with regard to the <coughs> Karnataka current affairs that is Param Pravega. So, Param Pravega is a supercomputer which has been recently installed in the Indian Institute of Science. It is considered as one of the fastest supercomputers of India and on the academic institutions it is considered as the one of the most powerful supercomputer. So, this Param Pravega is developed by CDAC. 
Center for Development of Advanced Computing is the organization behind the development of Param Pravega and the major components of the Param Pravega are either major of them are designed, built or manufactured indigenously. They are manufactured indigenously. The Param Pravega is a part of national super computing mission which has been started in 2015 to build around 73 supercomputers of various academic institutions and it will be installed in the various academic institutions to enhance the academic research to provide the academic network and to enhance the the computing capability and other and other application part so this is the part of national supercomputing mission and it is the national supercomputing mission is developed by the department of MITI in collaboration with the in collaboration with Indian Institute of Science and it is supported by the CDAC, Center for Development of Advanced Computing. Apart from this, the fastest supercomputer of India is Param Siddhi AI. Param Siddhi AI and the fastest computer of the world is Fugaco from Japan. Moving on to the next topic, it is Miyaki method. So why it is in use? The recently BMRCL, Bangalore Metro Railway Corporation Limited, decided to improve the green cover apart from its standard afforestation process and it is now thinking to shift into the Miyaki method. This method is designed by a Japan ecologist and biologist by name Akira Miyaki who gave a, a unique concept of improving the green cover in the urban areas. He focused on developing of native intensive native trees, native trees on a small patch of land, okay, on a small patch of land in, and he gave an idea of cultivating the dense forest in a small local area or patch of land using majorly the native trees. So it helps in improving, improving the green cover and reducing the carbon footprint and helps in, helps in, it also ha acts as a carbon sink. So this method has been, uh, has been in use and it has been developed in various parts of India and now in Bangalore, B BMRCL has decided to implement this model. Moving on to this next aspect, <coughs> the HCG, the Cancer Specialist Hospital in association with Institute of Bioinformatics and Applied Biotechnology has carried out an intense research in with regard to cancer and they came out with a new finding called as 114 variants which are responsible for causing cancers in the human body. Majorly they carried out research for the oral cancer which is considered the most prevalent form of cancer in the human in the Indians. So this <coughs> This, uh, this research has got appreciation from even the Westerns, especially Royal, Royal School of London Medicine. According to this, there are 114 variants which cause the oral cancer. And they have also identified the key signatures which indicate the, which predict or indicate the survival rate. How much chances of survival so these with this understanding now they can better target the treatment so that they can now better target the the cancerous cells are without affecting the normal healthy cells which will helps in better treatment of the cancer or better treatment of cancer diseases and helps the people to overcome the cancer and lead a fruitful and effective life moving on to the next important aspect that is that is a, a, a bio sample collection method. Bio sample collection method. This method was designed by a company called as Azuk Labs. Azuk Labs. It is incubated by Indian Institute of Science. This company, a biomedical company, a biotechnology company, has devised a bio sample collection method called as M wrapper where which is used to for bio, bio sample collection methodologies. This bio sample collection methodology can be used for various uh, purpose for storage, for transportation, for medical research, for genome sequencing in labs, for various applications this bio sample collection method can be used. It is the first indigenously developed 
first indigenously developed bio sample collection method in India. Even India moved to the bio sample testing methods such as P RT PCR technology, uh, the reverse transcriptase, polymerase chain reaction, polymerase chain reaction methodologies, but the bio sample collection method has not moved into the biomolecular level. So, with this, we can say that it will enhance the medical science, medical research and medical testing of the various bio sample collection methodologies. Moving on to the next aspect that is center of excellence. The center of excellence has been in a center of excellence in animation has been a set up in Whitefield in Bangalore by the government of India. This has a unique features which helps in which helps in developing the uh, the gaming and visual effects industry as Karnataka has a very potential to contribute in the under this field the government of India Karnataka has decided to uh, establish a center of excellence it will have the various features such as it will have a finishing school which will provide various advanced emerging technologies in the animation such as virtual reality digital compressing photogametry and so on the various emerging technologies in the animation will be trained and they give various advantages or facilities required for the people to learn these technologies i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching